Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on reflection and mirrors. The topic of this video is ray diagrams for concave mirrors. And here's what we want to know. How do you construct a ray diagram for objects placed at various locations along the principal axis in front of a concave mirror? I'm Mr. H. Let's get started. In a previous video, this one, I discussed the anatomy of a curved mirror. I've left a link to the video in the description section if you need to review it. In the video, we learned about two points, two distances, and a line. The two points are the center of curvature and the focal point, marked C and F in the diagram above me. The two distances are the radius of curvature and the focal length, marked big R and little f in the diagram above. And the line is known as the principal axis, the imaginary line that goes through the center of curvature beginning at the mirror location. We need to understand these terms in order to understand this video on how to construct ray diagrams for concave mirrors. When an incident ray of light reflects off the mirror, it follows the law of reflection. But it's useful to know three special rules about light waves in order to draw ray diagrams. The first one is that light traveling parallel to the principal axis on the way to the mirror will reflect and pass through the focal point. The second special rule is that light traveling through the focal point on the way to the mirror will reflect and travel parallel to the principal axis. These two rules here are used most often in constructing ray diagrams for object positions. But there's a third rule that becomes useful on occasion, and it's the fact that light traveling through the center of curvature will reflect back through the center of curvature along the same path with which it approached the mirror, except in the opposite direction. I will be constructing ray diagrams for various locations of the object along the principal axis, beginning with this case where the object is located beyond the center of curvature, more than one radius of curvature from the surface of the mirror. Begin by picking a point on the top of the object and then from that point draw two sets of incident and reflected rays. The first incident ray goes parallel to the principal axis and reflects to the focal point. The second incident ray goes to the focal point on the way to the mirror and reflects parallel to the principal axis. Where these two reflected rays intersect is the location of the image. If the object is positioned on top of the principal axis, then the image is positioned below the principal axis. And I draw it in from the principal axis down to this intersection point and label it I for image. My second ray diagram will be for an object position at the center of curvature. I'll repeat the same three-step process. First, pick a point on the top of the object to find the image of that point. Then, draw two sets of incident and reflected rays. The first set is an incident ray traveling through the focal point, and it reflects parallel to the principal axis. The second set is an incident ray that travels parallel to the principal axis, and it reflects through the focal point. You'll notice that these two reflected rays intersect. Their intersection point is the image of the top of the object. The complete image would extend from the principal axis down to this point. You'll notice that it's exactly at the center of curvature. If you've done a perfect diagram, that's where it will be. In my third example, the object is placed between the center of curvature and the focal point, more than one focal length away, less than one radius of curvature away from the surface of the mirror. Again, the same three steps. Pick a point on top of the object, and from that point, draw two sets of incident and reflected rays. The first travels parallel to the principal axis, and it reflects to the focal point. The second does the opposite, goes to the focal point first, and reflects parallel to the principal axis. You'll notice again these two reflected rays intersect. That intersection point is the image of the top of the object. The remainder of the image extends from the principal axis down to this intersection point. Draw it in and label it I. In my fourth example, the object will be in front of the focal point. That is less than one focal length from the surface of the mirror, as shown. I'm going to do this the same way, but there's a little twist that's going to happen. Pay attention. First, pick a point on top of the object so you can find the image of that point. Then draw two sets of incident and reflected rays. The first set goes parallel to the principal axis, and it reflects through the focal point. Now the second one has always been go through the focal point on the way to the mirror and reflect parallel to the principal axis. But if you notice this, I were to start at the top of the object and draw a ray through the focal point, it would never reach the mirror. So you draw the ray the opposite way. You start at the focal point and you head to the top of the object to the mirror, then reflect parallel to the principal axis as shown. Now the intersection point is always the location of the image. 
But if you look at these two reflected rays, they don't intersect. They're diverging, not converging. This tells me that the image is a virtual image and it's located behind the mirror. To find the image location, you have to force these two reflected rays to intersect by dashing them backwards behind the mirror. So using dash extension lines, I extend these reflected rays backwards and I notice they reflect above the principal axis and behind the mirror. So if the object stands above the principal axis, the image also stands above the principal axis and goes from the principal axis up to this intersection point as shown. There's one object position that we haven't discussed yet. What if the object's at the focal point? What happens then? Well, this is a little strange. Watch. Begin with a point on top of the object and draw one ray of light parallel to the principal axis and reflect it through the focal point. Now, if you think about that second ray that we've been drawing, it goes to the focal point and then reflects. But if you look here, if I were to draw a ray from the top of the object through the focal point, it would never hit the mirror. So I'm going to use the third rule I haven't used yet. Could have used it all along, but just haven't. I'm going to use the rule that a ray of light that starts at the center of curvature and travels to the mirror will reflect back on itself. So there's that rule applied. Ray of light going through the center curvature to the mirror reflects back through the center curvature. Now, these two reflected rays don't intersect. So we have to force them to intersect. And the way we did that in the last example is we, we drew extension lines behind the mirror. So I'm going to do it again. There's the dashed extension lines going behind the mirror, and you'll notice they're parallel to one another. Parallel lines will never intersect. And so this is the one situation, the one object position, for which there is no existing image. It's at this time in every video that I like to help you out with an action plan, a series of next steps for making the learning stick. But before I help you out, could you help us out by giving us a like, subscribing to the channel, or leaving a question or comment in the comment section below. Now for your action plan. Here are three resources. Each can be found on our website. We've left links in the description section of this video. The first is a simulation, a pretty awesome one. The second is a Minds on Physics mission. And the third is a tutorial page which formed the basis for this video. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. I'm Mr. H. Thank you for watching.